Total War is back in the history books, everybody, with Total War Pharaoh announced last week. And as you can see on screen today, we're taking a look at some in-game footage captured from an alpha build. Uh, the footage itself was taken from this video that the Total War team uploaded today. I'll have it linked below, of course, as a source. And I'd also recommend you check it out. They share some really interesting stuff. But if you don't have the time to do that, or you'd prefer me to deliver it in a slightly different way, then here I'm going to cut all of the gameplay out from that. And we're going to take a look. We're going to break it down. And I'll share with you the insights that they shared throughout the 45 minute interview. So with the Scarab trailer out of the way, and as we are nearly at 60,000 subscribers, please consider joining us. And let's jump in to Total War Pharaoh. The first section of their interview covered what is Total War Pharaoh? Well, it's generally focused in on the New Kingdom, a period around sort of uh, 11th century BC through 16th century BC, specifically they noted 13th century, the fall of the Bronze Age, the collapse of the Bronze Age, if you will. It's all about power struggles in a collapsing world. Obviously, Egypt is a key star here. It's kind of in the name. Uh, but also the Hittites are a very prominent force here too, as well as the Canaan city-states. And those were the three uh, sort of empires, nations, if you will, that were the key focus of this entire interview. And most of the gameplay, as you'll see, features uh, mainly on the Hittites and the Egyptians, particularly the Egyptians, obviously. The world itself struggles with collapse, as I mentioned, and, and that's primarily played through in gameplay, as you can see on screen, moving through sort of crisis and collapse periods. Uh, they're largely fueled by disasters, whether they be natural or geopolitical. Uh, the collapse of trade was something that they noted. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, the sea peoples, these uh, raiders or displaced peoples, likely migrating or moving into the region. They were a significant force in history, but also there's a bit of mystery that surrounds them. They were potentially different peoples from different places with different motivations. What we do know is in Total War Pharaoh, they'll play out as kind of like an end game crisis. They'll be a key part of these civilization incidents that you can see, and they'll really ramp that up, taking it from natural disasters and moving it through into a force that will actually threaten the entire civilization. And there'll be some key targets that they'll be looking to take or that you'll need to keep control of if you want to truly be a pharaoh through this legitimacy system. You can choose to move through the Egyptian one, become a pharaoh, or the Hittites. Alternatively, of course, you could opt to do neither of those things. Uh, legitimacy is built by conquest, by claiming territory, and through these buildings, such as monuments. If you capture an enemy monument, of course, you can then flip that and convert what kind of legitimacy it's pumping out. In this case, it'll be legitimacy for you. Uh, ultimately, through civil war and legitimacy wars, you can then become a pharaoh, uh, providing, of course, there's a vacant position. Some of the territories are considered sacred land. This will also provide you legitimacy, and some territories like these are required to keep the peace in the realm, or keep stability in the realm, I should say. That collapse feature that we were talking about earlier is slightly linked to cities. Certain key historical cities are required to be upkept, upheld, and in a peaceful manner in order to keep your legitimacy high and prevent the world from collapsing. So as we pan across what you're looking at here, which is the campaign map, let's move through now and talk a little bit more about that campaign. It's filled with choices. Which god will you worship? Which court will you worship? Pharaoh or Hittite great king, as we just discussed. And of course, the core settlements that I was talking about before need to be protected from collapse. There's prosperity, a crisis gauge, and all of that bleeds through into that legitimacy system to try and prevent collapse. Of course, one of the ways that you'll do that is through combat. Let's move through to talking about some changes here and some new features. What you'll notice is units walking backwards but attacking forwards. And that was one of the key things that they talked about. Unit stances replacing orders or formations, I should say, allowing us a little bit more control on how we deploy our units, what way they're facing and attacking, for example, two different things. Next, they talked about the world itself. And as you can see, these are all battle environments, battle terrains, and the uh, weather, the geography, 
the actual physical obstructions of the terrain are more important than ever, they claimed, with much more variety in maps and a dynamic weather system whereby it could be sunny at the start of a fight and then suddenly it could absolutely downpour with rain. That would, of course, lead to the terrain becoming quite muddy. And that may not benefit certain unit types, like chariots, for example. And so they really made a point of reinforcing that these sort of dynamic environments, the dynamic weather, plays out in terms of how the units function too. The Egyptians, generally speaking, will of course be slightly more lightweight, slightly faster, as you can see. They tend, of course, to have specific functions and roles too, like, for example, the chariots. Moving through to the Hittites, they tend to be much more heavily armoured. As you can imagine, that might make them a little bit slower, but also easier to defend themselves against potentially ranged volleys. The key here is that the thing that they stressed was that these natural environments and these environmental effects or disasters have very real impacts on units. The other environmental feature they were keen to show off was this, fire. The dynamic spread of fire across the terrain uh, is something that I think could add a lot of tactics and strategy inside of battles, deploying it obviously as an offensive tool, but also potentially as a defensive tool, cutting off flanking routes. They also made a point to note that city sieges were a key role for the fire. Fire can be deployed as a tactic when you're taking enemy cities, of course, but if it spreads through, then you'll pay the consequences of having a destroyed city. Of course, these siege towers and ladders, battering rams, will play a crucial role in besieging cities. And they made a point to reinforce that uh, in actually most of this, this section. Uh, they were talking about sieges being more important. And that role of things like fire and siege equipment too. Uh, the Egyptians, of course, bring their own siege tactic, liking to instead undermine the walls, sort of digging them out from underneath and allowing them to collapse. They'll also bring chariots, which they made a point to note will be much larger in their armies. Instead of having 12 to 18 units in their formation, they'll likely have around 30. And there'll be many different types for us to choose from. So hopefully a wide roster of units are available, at least that's what they were talking about in the interview. In the final section of the video, they almost went back to the first section, but not talking about what is this game and, and how does it play out, but actually some more detail about the world. Because historical accuracy, or as much as they can, was a key part of the interview. They really stressed that it was important to them that it was historical, and at least accurate enough. They also stressed player agency here, and how we'll have a lot of control, like we talked about earlier with the legitimacy pathways, do you want to be a pharaoh? Do you want to be the great Hittite king? Or none of those. They did share some more specific details though. Like, for example, uh, the map world will be filled with various tribes. You can hire their units, call truce with them, or of course be pulled into conflict. They also talked a little bit more about the role of uh, deities, of, of research, of in-game unlocks. Here you can see deities provide a whole load of things from battle stats, province improvements, uh, all kinds of improvements to generals and armies and battle formations too. And that was just one quick look. Unfortunately, we didn't get a lot more of those. They tended to pan out like this and show us, for example, the new battle animations and the wide variety of different uh, unit looks, unit styles that are represented in what they're hoping to be quite a diverse world, rich with history and rich with culture. As you witness the last of the gameplay, I'd like to move to just talk a little bit about some of the things that were reported by IGN this morning about Total War Pharaoh. Some interesting findings that haven't been discussed elsewhere, at least not in the video that I got this gameplay from. Uh, firstly, about the map. They say that they were able to get a few details on it that will fight over the Nile Valley as far south as Nubia, modern-day Sudan, heading north. We'll explore, of course, Canaan, the region that we usually refer to today as the Levant. Opposite Egypt, across the sea, we'll have the battle for Antolia, making up most of modern Turkey. But we won't be going as far east as Mesopotamia, so don't expect Syrians, etc. Uh, as they move through the article, they talk about how this game is similar to Three Kingdoms and Troy, with factions sort of organised around these semi-historical or, or key figures who are generally in a position to unite and build a culture and a nation around them, just like Ramses obviously will be in this video. They talk a little bit about the Sea Peoples that I mentioned in the introduction being a major endgame challenge. In their article, they sort of uh, compare it to the Huns in Total War Attila. So anyone who's played uh, much of that game, obviously that'll resonate with you. 
And then one of the other final things that they talked about, and I'll quote them here. Back on the battle side, the Siege AI seems remarkably competent for once, though the city defence I played saw the entire opposing army retreating almost the second their general died despite making it past the walls and still outnumbering us. Yes, that was a massive run on sentence. The thing that I wanted to note out of it was that the AI seems, at this stage, so far so good. Of course, we didn't hear a lot about the technical side of things, about you know how the game actually plays, what kind of performance should we expect, is the AI decent, what will multiplayer be like, etc. We don't have any of those details yet, but what I have been able to share with you today, thanks to the team at uh, Total War uh, for publishing their interview earlier, is a first look at Total War's return to history with Total War Pharaoh. Thank you very much for joining me today, everybody. See you next time.